All right, all right, y'all. We got uh, we got an alert. We got an alert, y'all. So, my man Demarcio O'Brien, shout out to uh, Young Grind, uh, Demarcio O'Brien. He brought to my attention of a of a missing trucker uh, that's out here. Um, his name is Marquez. Am I pronouncing that right, Marquez? Quez, yes, Marquez. Marquez. Uh, last name, Tur Marquez. What's his last name? Toops. Marquez True. Yes, sir. Toops. Uh, he's 32 years old. Marquez. Marquez Toops. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, he's 32. He's 32 years old. He's six foot and 180 pounds. Uh, he's an over the road truck driver. He's from Macomb. Georgia. He left for a trucking job back in April. His family last made contact with him on July 2020. Last known whereabouts, which was Chicago, Illinois. Unfortunately, he may be confused. Of course, if you have any information on Marquez whereabouts, please call contact these phone numbers, which is 478-787-539, I mean, 5309-478-302, I mean, 320-4605 and 478-365-0764. As of right now, all right, y'all. So at this time, I would like to bring on to the show Rashonda Ding to the show. Rashonda, the whole trucking community is is keeping an eye out for this young man. Uh, what is this young man to you? my brother he's your brother okay 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 yeah um so let's let's get let's get to the beginning like how did you how did you come uh, find out that he that he went missing and what do you know so far get get us caught up to right now okay well as far as i know he went for a driving job on April 12th mm -hmm. uh, of 2020 this year. And so our last communication with him was July 1st, of 2020. That's the last time anyone in the family had any communication with him. And so um, we had been calling his phone, his phone going straight to voicemail. We didn't know the trucking company. We didn't know the name of the trucking company. So I had to... You know, just make a lot of calls. That's what I've been doing the last few days, making a lot, a lot of calls. So finally, get the name of the trucking company, which is Covenant uh, uh, Trucking Transport. Company Covenant in Chattanooga. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, sir, and um, Tennessee. Upon uh, my, uh, you know, just calling around, the information that I just um, got today, a few hours ago, is that. Uh, which he goes, he goes, his name is Marquez, but he goes by Dante. We call him Dante. Mm -hmm. So Dante, a truck was abandoned uh, July 17th in Montclair, Virginia. Montclair, um, Virginia. Okay. So, did they tell you that for, he, so he actually, he actually got on with Covenant Transport. Uh, they get, they, they gave him a dispatch. They dispatch him out to Montclair, Virginia, and that's when that that was the last contact made between him and the company, right? Yes. So I was told that he was. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. You was told that he was a uh, confused, um, corresponding um, between between my brother and the, 
fleet manager, fleet manager, I'm not sure what they call it, but he expressed that um, Dante seemed confused, and then um, he lost contact with him on the 17th. Um, not, not the seven, not knowing not the seven, my brother. Not the 17th of 17th. this month? Or this well, not even this one. July. July. So July. the let seventeenth of July. <laughs> yes. So but you but you guys lost contact with him since April. So that's about about a four month gap right there. No, the first. No, just the first. We lost contact. Oh, you lost contact. Oh. We, la- we last spoke with him. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you la- so you lost We last spoke with him on the first. On the first of July. Yes, sir. Okay, so, but you say he went missing, or no, he left for the job. So back in April, so he got the job with Covenant back in April. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. But you guys lost contact with him in July, so that's about a month. That's that's about yes. a month gap. So have you guys been in contact with him mm-hmm. prior to that? Yes, I was. I was contact. I was in contact with him, off and on, very, very frequent. I mean, mostly every day, I would call him. So, what was his? But um, when we lost contact. But to you, what was his mental status? Sorry. What was his mental status when you was talking to him, with between April and May? Um, it was in and out. He seemed a little confused at times, and that's when I, I wanted to uh, find out. Because at this time, I, I, I didn't know the, the name of the company. So I asked him, I said, I need to know the name of the company you're driving for. Because to me, you, you seem a little confused and you do not need to be, you don't need to be on the road. Right. If you're confused, right. you know, you're not thinking straight. And he never gave, he never gave me that. I never got the information from him. And um, around that time, that was towards the end of June. And that's when we, you know, July yeah, he called my mother for her birthday, mm-hmm. but that's it. So technically, the last contact was with was with your mother, and he wished her a happy birthday. Yes. And and you guys haven't you guys haven't heard from him since. Um, Correct. So today, uh, of course, uh, young grind got a hold of you today. Uh, he did a live feed, uh, you know, telling the truckers about, you know, be on the lookout for this, uh, for this man. Um, what do you want to, what, what, what do you want to say to him if, if, if he has, you know, if his phone is back on or he happened to come and hear it, hear this, what would you want to say? Um, just. I don't know at this point because I'm not sure if he he's even, you know, in his right mind, which I hope he is. But if he is, please get in contact with his family because everybody is worried. Everybody. Is like, and uh, and I'm not I don't I, I don't really know what to say at this point because, you know, the same a mother knows their child and my mother, he would call. He would call my mother. He may not call me, mm-hmm. but that's where it gets, you know, that's where the most concern comes from. He he always stays in contact with his mother. So. Okay. Okay. We just at a loss right now. We don't really know. Um, so far, who have you been in contact with? Have, have, have you got it? Now you say Virginia, right? What, what was it? Mount, Mount Clear, Virginia. Yes. Have you, have you called? Mount Clair, Virginia. Mount, Mount Clair, right? I've, yeah. Have you? I've been in contact with. Um, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, have you have you called the law enforcement down there to to um uh, to talk to them? Yes, I have made contact with law enforcement in Virginia and in Tennessee, and also in Macon, Georgia, here with at our residence. So um, that's my next step is to give them a call back because I was given numbers. Uh, uh, they gave me some numbers, uh, hospitals, uh, jail, what have you. Um, so that's my next step to give them a call back so I can move forward with, you know, I, because I was 
you know, trying to figure out who do I, what, um, who do I actually have to, to file this mission person? Where? I mean, where do I have to actually have to file this mission person's report? Is it Macon? Is it Tennessee? Is it Virginia? I'm, I didn't, I didn't know that because he, he lives here. He worked there, but he disappeared here. So I don't, I don't know. So I got to follow them back. That's my next step. I, I know it's, uh, I know it's a lot of tension going on over there. So I, you know, believe me, I, I, I feel you because it's a lot of things that you, that you want to do that you don't know what to do and that you can't do. Uh, I would assume that uh, when you got in contact with Covenant and they told you that the last place of the of the truck was abandoned in Virginia, did Covenant by chance do a wellness check? Did they send uh, send officers over to the truck because Covenant knows where their trucks is at? They they could have sent. Okay. Uh, sent the officer over to the truck to, you know, to see if it was, you know, if he was in there, uh, if he was in there, if he's all right. I mean, they just, I mean, the conversation mm -hmm. with, with Covenant, they just told you what, that the truck was abandoned and, and just gave you a little, just said that he, you know, they went back and forth on the texts and all like that. They, they didn't tell you that they sent somebody out there to check on the truck? No, sir. They haven't told me anything. And actually, the, the little information that I got that I wasn't supposed to get, it was confidential. But they'll be hearing from me again. And no, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't express to us that they sent anyone out there. But, you know, they didn't know, they had no knowledge of his mental, you know, his mental state. We do. How would they, they don't? How would they? So, not, how, how would that be confidential? I mean, your family. You're checking on your loved I, one. How? Would, yeah, exactly. How is that yeah, confidential? I, yeah, that shouldn't be confidential. That should be open. You, you calling? You haven't spoken with your brother for about a month, going into a month and a half. You call them up to get information, and and they tell you that the truck was abandoned. You you can't tell me like did y'all send somebody up? Nah. Mm -mm. Yeah. That that's why I said they'll be hearing from me again because when I did get that information, that wasn't my first um time I made. That wasn't the first time I made contact with them. I had I already called them early this morning. And I was told he's uh I've been calling a list of um truck driving companies throughout mm -hmm. uh Tennessee area, and I was told at first that he wasn't you know, he didn't work there. And it wasn't uh, until I pressed more for more information. And I was told, you know, I, we're not supposed to tell you, but this, this, and this. So, you know, that's how that went. Nah. Uh-uh. Um, all right. Well, uh, Rashida, thank you for uh, coming on. Um, I will definitely go ahead and uh, get this uh, get this out for you. Um my success hopefully that uh that we will find this young man safe and sound um and uh we we will try to get uh more truckers out there to um to uh look for this young man um any thank you you're very you're very welcome uh again mark marquez turps he's 32 years old uh toots i'm sorry toots He's 32 years old. Uh, he's 180 pounds. Sits, I mean, six foot. Uh, last known, uh, last known was in Mon Mon Montclair, Virginia. Mm -hmm. Montclair, Virginia. All right. Um, hold on for a second, Rashida. Let me let me bring in uh, Demarcio. And before before I let you go, let me bring in Demarcio. Okay, he uh, eagerly to tell me that he has uh, more information. I believe this is his phone number, Demarcio. Yo, 
All right, we're we're on with uh with Demarky O'Brien, the young man that's uh that's uh helping out uh Rashida with the uh, location of her brother. Uh Demarkio, I got Rashida on the line as well. Uh get us up to date on what you have found out on your end. All right, what's going on? Uh everybody, it's Demarkio. YG, Young Grind. Uh, we have Mark, her, uh, Rashida's brother, Marquise Tux, uh, 32 years old, out of Macon, Georgia. Drove for Covenant Transport from April 2020 to July 17th, uh, 2020. Uh, went, uh, went missing in. Mount Claire, Virginia, with the company having no contact with the driver or family members. Now, it, it seems kind of strange that the company wouldn't, uh, wouldn't you know, give this young lady the information she requires to to locate her brother. Why would a company do that, man? Uh, we've been, I'm not quite sure why trucking companies act funny on wanting to provide information. I understand, uh, you know, the privacy and stuff like that. But when we sitting up here and we have the family member on the line with this person's information and we had to deal with covenant for, I would say up to two hours just to get them to say that he works for that company uh, and a matter of fact we had to go through the information of getting of when they gave him the rental car to to see who he drove for okay because what a company okay wait 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 wait. They, they was that the rental car to get him up to the company or the rental that must have been the rental car to get him up to the company right during orientation. That was the rental car to get him up to the company or during orientation in the month of April. Okay. Okay. So obviously so I, obviously had, everything must have went good through the orientation for him to actually start uh driving. I mean, I, I would think if he had uh mental issues, am am I correct in saying that, Rashida? Yes, sir. If, yes, sir. if he had mental issues shouldn't shouldn't somebody there at orientation should have called on into that not necessarily and i say that all because of that all triggers onto yourself of how you carry yourself of you know if you know in the situation of your own health that you're going to control it at some point in time and that when you have ends that don't meet you're going to do what you can to make ends meet so uh, you would figure with all the technology and stuff like that and the background stuff that people can do, that there's nothing you can typically hide in a situation as if if he had medical reports of this uh, in a system, uh, you know, there, there should be no reason to, for this to be not looked over before bringing him to orientation. Uh, so he uh, basically put this and was able to cover it through the days of orientation until he got out there on the road. Uh, now, as of the understanding that we got is he's been employed with uh, Covenant Transport from April to July 17th mm -hmm. uh, when he abandoned the truck, which they are not releasing information as of uh, what I've gathered of where the truck was actually left at. They're just given a city. They're not given the actual location. They now they should yeah. now. Did they tell now? I I, I asked uh, Rashida. Did they at least give her the information? Uh, give her any 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 information of somebody going out there doing a wellness check on the truck? Hello. Yes. Yeah, sorry. No. Hello? No. Not sorry. not you. I'm Demarcio. Hello. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, did you did you hear my question? Uh, that wasn't uh provided up or asked when we was uh talking to uh Covenant. 
uh, when we talked to Covenant, we had asked Covenant if this person was employed. And like I said, we had to deal with Covenant for one or two hours before they even told us that he was employed and how we got the information that he was employed yeah. with Covenant was through the car rental place. Okay. Now, my, 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 my thing is this, because I am still shocked and surprised uh, that Covenant would not give any information for, to this young lady as far as looking for, you know, looking for her lost brother. I, I do not understand that. Um, I, I'm very, very, very disappointed in, in Covenant and any trucking companies that will refuse any type of information for a loved one looking for a loved one because as of right now they over here worry they 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 worry stiff about their about their loved one right now you guys you guys didn't send nobody out there to do a wellness check you you wouldn't give any information to this family uh, i i i don't understand i don't understand i i i see some things in the future from this family to come, especially if if something you know happened to happened to their loved one, um, Demarcio man, any is there any other information that you uh is there any other information that you got right now, bro, that uh that you can provide us right quick before we get up out of here? Um, as of right now, we just uh still in the process of trying to figure out where he was at and why uh. Covenant transport was being so difficult during the time that they was. And my opinion on the whole situation is that even if this situation of him abandoning a truck, you still have a missing driver. And this is the reason of situations of having emergency contacts. So just because the driver abandoned your truck, wherever he is, is still a missing driver. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right. Well, uh, it's, it is, you know, it was crazy that we had to go through enterprise for them to tell us what company he went to okay that's what's up all right well demarky o'brien and washita dean thank you very much for coming on um i hope you guys uh i hope you guys successfully find this young man and and let's let's get him on let's get him home safe all right Oh yeah, Let, let's get together, okay. truck drivers, and uh, uh, everybody on the lookout. We're looking on the east coast of uh, eighty-five, ninety-five, Tennessee, all the states touching Virginia, going down back home to Macon, Georgia. So, drivers, let's get together and bring Marquise Tuck back home to Macon, Georgia. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right, bro, y'all take it easy. And uh, much success to y'all. I appreciate it. Lockout. Thank you're you welcome. so much. You're welcome. Y'all take it easy. All right, drivers. Let's um, let's pull together this one time. All right, this one time. You know what I'm saying? I, I know there's there's a lot of us out there that's just looking out for self, but this is one of our own. You know what I'm saying? One of our own. Uh, let me uh, give you the information again, and uh, and and hopefully we can bring this man home. Uh, Marquez Tuts, thirty-two years old, six foot, one hundred and eighty pounds. Uh, he's from Macon, Georgia, and he was last known in McKean, McCain, Virginia. If you guys should see him, make sure you call these numbers: uh, four seven four seven eight seven eight. Seven five three zero nine seven eight uh, four seven eight three two zero six four six zero five and four seven eight three six five zero seven six four. All right, you guys take it easy, stay blessed, and let's get this man home.